Got it. Okay, hi, um, humans. This is a um, some research of mine on something that I translate as ghost oppression dreams or ghost oppressive dreams. There's this term in Chinese, meng yan. Um, meng is dream. And yan is this special type of dream that probably you don't want to have. Um, in some ways, it's parallel to things like sleep paralysis in, you know, modern Western, um, you know, thought, but it's not necessarily exactly the same. So, so let's see what it is. And yeah, if you do have questions, every so often I'll ask, um, are there questions? And then you should feel free to turn on your mic or um, type in chat. So there's a number of sleep pathologies in Chinese medicine, and um, they're not always translated um, the same way into English, and some of them are not really talked about much in English. Of course, there's insomnia. There are a couple of terms for that. There's a term for excessive dreaming, which is probably what we hear called dream disturbed sleep. Then there's this thing called meng yan, which I'm going to be talking about. Now, actually, in modern Chinese, it, it's usually going to be translated as nightmares. But you know, they're different kind of nightmares. Um, and some are just like, oh, that was bad. And then you're over it. And some are just, you know, really uh, scary. And so this is like a very scary kind of sleep um, problem. You know, I'm not going to talk about this today, but of course, there are also things like um, nocturnal emissions, which in Chinese are like dream emissions. And even interestingly, there's dreams of intercourse with ghosts, um, but I'm not going to talk about that today. That could be a topic for the future <laughs> um, in any case. And then sleepiness, somnolence. So um, as far as dreams go, then Ling Shu. This is my bad translation of Ling Shu chapter 43 of a section of it. And I did cheat by looking at Unchild's translation, but I didn't use his. This is my own translation. It still needs some work. But the basic idea, Chibo says um, that there's some normal evils versus some like abnormal evils. And so they normal evils like weather chi invade from the outside and they move around not in one place, um, but sometimes they get into the zong organs and um, they still don't have a fixed location. And here's the part that starts getting interesting. These evils that have invaded move with ying and wei um, and fly up with the huan and the po. Um, so I, I think we might have some first quarter students as well as people who've been around for a while. So just in case you need a reminder, the Hun is one of the five spirits, the one that is stored by the liver. And the Po is another of the five spirits that's stored by the lungs. And the Hun is usually translated as ethereal soul and the Po is corporeal soul. So anyway, your hun and your po fly up with these evils and somehow it prevents people from being peaceful when they're sleeping and it makes them dream a lot. Um, and then the next paragraph I don't think is that important, but it does mention that in this case there's insufficiency, which is a different way of saying deficiency. And this is one of the things to notice is that these kinds of dreams have like the person has deficiency and then something kind of evil fills in that empty spot. If there's no deficiency, there's no place for the evil to get in and cause all of this problem. Um, so... So that's just something that Neijing says about dreams. It's not specifically about ghost oppressive dreams, but it does mention Hun and Po in regards to dreaming. And actually, it doesn't mention Shen, does it? Um, yeah. So this is Dr. one Wilcox, thing. Wilcox, can I just ask, or do yes. you want me to wait until the end? Well, kind of, um, maybe if it's urgent, what's up? I was just saying, is it, were you saying the deficiency is in the, the 
liver and the lungs or just in the body in general? Well, it's not specific here. Um, we're, we'll see more examples of this deficiency okay. kind of idea. So, um, you know, it's it's probably more related to liver, which we don't usually talk about liver as being so deficient. We more talk about it as excess. Okay. Thank you. So, sure. Um, there's this ancient Han Dynasty dictionary of, um, you know, called Shuo Wen Jiezi, and it says um, that this term yan, which is the ghost oppressive dream word, <laughs> um, has it has the ghost radical in it. You can see this thing on the bottom is the ghost radical, and then the top part of it, which the line they draw down to like go by the ghost part, means to detest or to loathe or disgust. Um, so it's something really like ah, it, that the ghost is bringing. Um, and then it says that this character means dream fright um, over here. Yeah, dream fright. Um, but there's another way we can see it besides detestable ghosts or something like that. Um, the top part of this radical is also used in the word that means pressure. And, um, but pressure has the earth radical underneath. And if you remove the earth radical and replace it with the ghost radical, then that's how I get this idea of ghost oppression or ghost oppressive. And then it's usually with the word dream next to it. Um, and we'll see that one of the ancient texts definitely points that out. And another, you know, a modern person, Nigel Weissman, agrees because he also translates this as oppressive ghost dreams. So there's this idea of pressure, like a ghost is applying pressure to you. A ghost is putting pressure on you. Ghost in Chinese doesn't only mean the spirit of a dead person. Other things that were never human are in the category of ghost. Um, so that's just something to know. This ghost oppression was also mentioned in non-medical literature as well as the medical literature. So there's a pretty famous book that you may have heard of called Journey to the West, which was a novel written in the Ming Dynasty. And actually, I found this sentence on the internet when I was reading in Chinese about ghost oppressive dreams. And to be honest, I haven't read Journey to the West. I should. Um, in English translation, of course, it would be too hard for me in Chinese. So there's this passage which because I don't have the context, I don't know what's going on in the story. I've probably mistranslated it, but it talks about, you know, someone who used the demon skills of ghost oppression. Um, and so what happened was the person's mind was clear, but it was difficult to open his mouth and eyes. And so that's something like sleep paralysis in modern medicine. You wake up, but your body's paralyzed. You can't move. You can't cry out, but you feel something evil is there pressing on you. And so this is a very similar kind of idea. There's also a history um, book from the Song Dynasty that says somebody, and I don't know, again, I didn't bother like chasing down who is this Wang Feng, <laughs> but he went to sleep and suddenly he had a great ghost oppression and he was shouting continuously, but couldn't wake up. And so his family did some ritual magic thing, led a black ox near him and tied a human figurine made of peach wood to his left side. Peach wood, ghosts don't like peach wood in case you're wondering. That's just something in Chinese culture. So we can see here, though, this is a little different because they're having a horrible nightmare, but they can't wake up from it. Um, and that's still coming under the category of this, you know, ghost oppression. And so that's not sleep paralysis. If you can be yelling out, it's not sleep paralysis. But at the end, I have a few different sleep disturbances from biomedicine, and there are other ones where the person is yelling out. So this isn't this is a larger category than just sleep paralysis, but it includes those kinds of things. Okay, Puji Fang is a Ming Dynasty book that, if I remember correctly, was um, 
ordered by the emperor. This is like an imperial medical book that summarizes all the knowledge up until this point. And it does have a chapter on ghost oppression. And so it says, here's like, finally, we're getting to a Chinese medicine definition of it. Sudden ghost oppression means repression or submission. So here he is using that idea of pressure, which you can see in the character. Um, it means being repressed by a ghost evil within a dream. That actually comes from an earlier book, which I think we'll see quotes from later. And he goes on to say, whenever someone sleeps, they perceive whatever their hun meets as the, the form of that thing unfolds. So note again, we're talking about the hun, which is the spirit that is stored by the liver. And um, so your hun is going out while you're dreaming. And when it encounters different things, that's what you dream of. But in this case, with this ghost oppression, the form frequently seems to be terrifying. And so here, you know, it's involving the heart. When their heart chi becomes chaotic, their jing shen, their, you know, jing essence and shen spirit. But this can also mean their mental state is afraid and constrained. Their will shakes. You know, will is the spirit of the kidneys. Um, ghost evils take advantage of the deficiency. This is always the case when the old books talk about creepy things like goo or ghost evils or whatever, there's usually deficiency, which leaves a space for that bad thing to get in. Um, and it enters the victim during sleep. It makes the victim's hun and fall fly away, leaving their body. And so they can't awaken because the hun and fall are out there and can't come back in. Something's in the hun and is the hun's place and so how can the hun get back in when something else got in its place and um there's actually we'll see throughout this that they thought that these ghost oppression dreams could result in death um yeah that's what they say so um okay so anything you want to say so far christian's comments it hasn't really said where exactly is the deficiency, but like liver, heart, maybe lungs. Where is the hun going? Like where it's just it, it it's not bound by the laws of physics. It goes wherever it wants. Um, it could fly to a different time or place. Uh, you know, it's it's just in a different realm, kind of than than hopefully we are in currently. Um, so whatever it encounters, that's what you dream of. Um, but it's like, you know, science fiction or fantasy. It just can go wherever and see strange things that don't necessarily exist, um, you know, in our realm. Anyone else? Anything? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, Gloria here. Hi. Thank you so much for this. So. Um, I don't know if this is a question or, or a statement. Uh, I was very curious about this because um, the whole sleep paralysis, that was the entirety of my childhood. And I did travel a lot and I would um, make sure I would have checkpoints so that when in my waking hours, I would go to those places and check to see if what I'd seen was real. Mm. And it was. <laughs> and so when you're discussing about how we have sleep paralysis and it's not, um, yeah, it was a scary feeling because, you know, I was a child uh, all the way up to, to the age of 14. That's when I, I was able to control the uh, getting back in my body. What are your feelings on, well, for me, I call it astral projection. I didn't perceive it as a nightmare necessarily or as something bad. Um, I love the freedoms that I had when I went to sleep. So well, maybe what, what you saw that? was, maybe what you saw was more benign. You know, a lot of people see like creepy stuff, which we're going to talk about. So 
you know, you are fortunate. I've known other people who had sleep paralysis and it, it's like really terrifying to them. So you're fortunate that wherever your hood went, that it went to a good place. Um, and so I'd love to hear more uh, about that, but like, let's try and get through, you know, some of the slides that describe it. And then you can tell me if your experience matches with what the old books say. Um, so uh, it's very good to have you here. Are you one of the Yosan people? Yes, and I can't wait to tell you about trying one of the syrups you taught us. Ah, Mind blowing. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so at the end we'll talk, but let me keep doing this thing. Um, you were in that class. Okay, so uh, this book is um, by somebody named, and I can't pronounce Chinese properly, forgive me for my Chinese pronunciation, but a Song Dynasty doctor named Xu Xu Wei, and he wrote the liver channel. He's talking about a particular case, but for a certain reason, I don't have the whole case here. He's talking about this issue though. The liver channel received an evil. Back in those times they often said liver channel when they meant liver organ it's kind of confusing so you should just read this as the liver receives an evil he says this is not a heart this is not shen this is not heart and he says evils take advantage of deficiency that common theme and attack the liver the liver stores the hun and so it becomes a wandering horn. You know, the horn can go out on little day trips, but it shouldn't be homeless. <laughs> and so this is saying it's kind of becoming homeless and not tethered to the body. Um, the liver of a healthy person will not receive an evil. When a healthy person lies down, the hun returns home to the liver and the shen is quiet so they can sleep peacefully. But in this case of this meng yan, this dream disturbance. Um, in this case, the liver has an evil and the hun can't get back in because it's like somebody's occupied your house and they're not letting you back in. And because of this, when that person lies down, the hun rises up as if it would separate from the body and the liver governs anger. So in the particular case this is coming from, um, when the person is angry, they have even a harder time. I would think anything that kind of agitates the liver would make the ghost depressive dreams worse. So let's look at a few cases. We've had a few like descriptions from medical and non-medical books, but let's look at a case or two. Gong Ting Xian is a Ming Dynasty doctor, and so this is a case. So some, you know, important guy, um, Mr. G. Um, had deficiency detriment. That means really severe deficiency. It's not quite taxation, but it's worse than just a little bit, you know, plain deficiency. He didn't dare close his eyes. Whenever he closed his eyes, his shen and his hun drifted away and he was not conscious of anything. And furthermore, he didn't dare to speak. When he spoke, he could not catch his breath. He never thought of eating or drinking. He was almost in a stupor. I diagnosed his pulses, they were deficient. They were minute, which is really deficient. This was not deficiency of original qi with heart shen deficiency detriment. Okay, so that's a whole long sentence. This original qi, according to Li Dong Yuan and um, people who follow him, is basically the same as post heaven qi um, or even zheng qi, right qi. So this is not kidneys original chi, um, but this is like post heaven chi was deficient. Um, this was deficiency of original chi with heart shen deficiency detriment. So before, wait, was he saying liver? No, he hadn't said liver yet. Okay. And so he used one dose of a pill made with jusha, which of course is not something that most of us are going to take internally, much less prescribe to our patients. Um, that's that mineral cinnabar. And he was a little more at ease. And then he used Bu Zhang Yi Tang because that was written by Li Dong Yuan. And he seems to be a fan of Li Dong Yuan. But he doubled the ginseng and the huang qi. And he added some other herbs, which we're going to see. There are a bunch of formulas for meng yan. And they all have yuan in it, which is this calm the spirit um, herb. And 
most of them have Fu Shen in it, which is like Fu Ling, but more calm, calming for the Shen. And Suanzo ran another calming herb and some other herbs to nourish yin. I guess yin is heavy and will anchor it. He took several doses of the above formula and was able to gradually recover. So again, they're speaking of deficiency and then he's using herbs to supplement for this. Um, Shumingi Leian is this um, Qing Dynasty case study book. Um, of historical cases, you know, well, some are recent in the Qing dynasty and some might go back hundreds of years. Um, so here's, you know, in a certain year, a woman in the family of whoever, I guess this Lo Ying, um, saw two servants in a dream, one in front of the other. They were holding something in their hands. The one in front said, has it arrived yet? And we never even know what is, what are they talking about? But this is what's in their dream. The one in back said, yes. And then there was a sudden sound of something being struck. And then her dream became ghost oppression. And for about a uh, hour, which means a two hour time period, <laughs> she felt unbearable pain in her heart, confusion and a stifling sensation. So the doctor suddenly remembered a certain formula to treat this condition and gave her three grains of it. So when you come across a formula that is talking about grains, it means just tiny little specks of it. And it means it's got heavy minerals in it and that it's like an elixir type formula with heavy minerals in it. So unfortunately, not one that you and I are probably going to take. So she had three of these tiny little grains, the size of a grain of sand of this formula. And in a short while, she was disease free. She said that after taking the medicine, her pain stopped and her spirit woke up and now she's back to normal. And so he's been giving this formula to other people when he thinks it's useful. It came from Chen Jin Fang. And if you want to know what the formula is, it has like Dan Xia is another name for cinnabar jusha. And I don't know what Sung Ching is. It's some kind of mineral. And, you know, it's like all minerals, all four of five, one, two, whatever, how many number five, I think, are all minerals. Um, so you can see this is probably not a formula that you and I will use, but still the description of what's going on here is, is part of what I'm trying to show you. We'll have formulas that are usable. Um, Another Dr. Suni Kuei um, treated the wife of somebody. They're always name dropping back then and they didn't have HIPAA so they could just talk about like, you know, whoever famous to brag about. They have famous clients. So the wife was frightened at night by ghost oppression, oppression dreams. She often felt dizzy or faint. She was distracted and she'd have quite a few episodes in one day. In addition, she was coughing and her face had a greenish color. Um, so that's kind of implying lungs and liver. Um, she never thought of eating. All she'd eat was like beef jerky, like dried strips of beef. Um, doctors repeatedly treated her, but it never worked. And so some said it was called phlegm because you know how we say phlegm misting the heart orifices makes somebody have hallucinations or whatever. Um, and so they gave her foods and rogue really hot herbs, but like the condition just increased. And so Sun Ikwe felt her pulse. It was wiry on the left and slippery on the right um, and so forth. And then her husband's first two wives, so she's the third wife, two of them died of consumption, which is probably tuberculosis or something similar. So Sun thought she also had consumption, which is not easy to treat. And, you know, I haven't read a lot about tuberculosis, but some people do have kind of altered states in the later stages of tuberculosis. So he gave her a prescription to strengthen her spirit, her shen, and build up her health, and waited for her stomach chi to return, and then he could use the regular stuff to treat her. 
So probably, you know, stomach chi is something like if a pulse lacks stomach chi, it means that patient's unlikely to survive. Um, you know, all of our pulses probably have stomach chi. It doesn't literally mean the pulse of the stomach. It's like a special characteristic within the pulse. But apparently she was so deficient that her pulse was like kind of like a death pulse. But um, he built her back up. Um, and so he's... Um, yeah, so then the rest of the story is he gave her some more elixir formulas. So these mineral ones that we can't use. And she was better after two months. And then she gave birth to a daughter the next year. So it sounds like she pretty much recovered. Um, <laughs> this is a story, not a medical text. Um, some of you may know, I really like um, Tales of the Strange, which is kind of a genre in Chinese culture of like people recording weird occurrences that have happened. And, you know, probably a lot of it is hearsay and, and really hyped up, but like, it's just, these stories are kind of fun. So here's a story. During the eighth year, whatever, during 1085, Somebody named Hole left some place with three people from his hometown, and they were going to take the, you know, imperial exams, except just at the local level, but they still had to go to the nearby big city. So they stopped at a post station. So, you know, like for postal service, they had horses and they had to have stations where you could get food and, and the horses could be changed, but also travelers could sometimes stay at the post station. Um, and so in that post station, there were four beds, one in each corner of the room and four people were traveling. So they were exhausted. So they each lay down on one of the four beds and all fell asleep. And then in addition, there were two servants that they didn't even let the servants have a bed. Not very nice. Maybe the servants were already there. I'm not sure it's these people's servants or who. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, Hall heard some sounds in the northwest corner of the room, not where his bed was. And then the lamp suddenly went dark and something resembling a pig climbed right up on one of the beds. It was hairy. It had four legs and it sniffed that scholar from head to toe, giving him fright and ghost oppression. So now he's sleeping and then suddenly he's having some kind of horrible <laughs> dream. After a moment, the thing got down from the bed and went to each of the other beds and did the same thing, sniffed the person up and down. And they'd all cry out in fright in their sleep when the thing examined them. Finally, he was the last in line, fortunately, before it had time to sniff him. Something seemed to pursue it and the pig-like thing got down and scurried away, disappearing back into the northwest corner where it came from. We don't know what the thing is that helped him, but something helped him and chased it away. So he had still been awake. And so he called to the others, get up. And they all said they dreamed of a strange animal that pressed on their body. Remember ghost oppression. There's this idea of pressure in some of the cases. And in sleep paralysis, there's also frequently a feeling of pressure as if something's sitting on your chest. Um, maybe a servant chased away the pig. And that would be good. Yeah, a good servant, give him a raise or her. Um, nobody knew what kind of animal it was. The servants started to talk about what they saw. And, you know, all the others were feeling really weird and depressed. Only Hole um, was still happy and self-confident because he didn't get sniffed. <laughs> um, so they went to the Capitol and Hole passed the exams, but the other three failed and were sent away and then they died. <laughs> so um, he didn't get sniffed and he passed and everybody else did not pass. So that's a tale of the strange, it's not medicine. Um, here's another. Um, I know some of you might be interested in mantras and incantations. Um, so this is also a tale of the strange from a non-medical book. Somebody named Yuan taught his younger brother, also named Yuan, to use a certain mantra called something like the treasure tower mantra. 
Um, and so the younger brother was not a firm believer, but he still got up and would recite it, you know, 30 or 50 times, whatever. He just did it because it should be done. And he didn't know how effective this mantra was. So in 1133, he was studying in a school. And this was right after the Jin invaded the north and the northern Song dynasty was ended and the Song people who could fled to the south and now it's the southern Song dynasty. So this is a time of turmoil and warfare and the city was left in desolation and ruins. So there was a servant who was in the student dormitory, his name was Wang, and he had ghost oppression in his room every night. And I'm wondering, could he have PTSD after the war? Um, because we're going to see that people with PTSD have strange dreams. At the end, I have some stuff from Western medicine. So some people do have like sleep paralysis and so forth. Anyway, the dreams would go on all night. They wouldn't stop until dawn. There was never a night of peaceful sleep. And so all the people who lived there thought he was like a pain. They wanted to get rid of him because he was yelling in his sleep. And so the guy what's his name un um asked what he saw and so his dream was somebody grabs me by the hair and is about to whip me so i call out and i resist and so this um un chang um was a nice guy and said okay servant wang move into my room and and we'll see if we can make it stop but it didn't and so everybody wanted to throw the guy out because he was disturbing everyone's sleep they discussed expelling him and then yuan who remember his brother had taught him this mantra tried writing it on you know, making like a talisman that had the writing of the mantra and pasted it to a pillar in the room. And that night, Wang was peaceful and could sleep. And from then on, there was no more evil spirit of the student dormitory. Uh, so this mantra, it continues, um, has eight syllables. And if I take the Chinese in, you know, modern Mandarin, this is the pinyin for it. But when I search online, then some say it's pronounced like this way and some say it's pronounced that way. Um, but the book goes on to say that the pronunciation was passed down incorrectly and that you should research into the Datsang, which is this, you know, huge Buddhist um, text, and then you can find the pr correct pronunciation there. I don't know. But if you're into mantra and somebody has this kind of issue, there are a couple of videos with this. There's a video with this mantra um, that may not be exactly identical. Sometimes a syllable is different or something, but it's mostly this mantra. There's also an article in Chinese, which you can try um, you know, right clicking and tell it to translate to English and it won't be perfect, but whatever. So if you're interested in this mantra, it's not a very long one. So it's kind of something that wouldn't be too hard to memorize. And so this guy, UN, he regretted that he hadn't practiced it very faithfully when he was younger. And so now he really tried to use it a lot because he thought it was powerful. Well. <sighs> I'll have, there's another case or two later, but I'm going to start talking about treatment. So before I do, do you have any questions, comments? Okay. I have a question, Dr. Yes. Wilcox, about yes. um, paralysis. Uh -huh. um, sleep paralysis is like when you're awake, but what about when you're dreaming and you can't move? Like sometimes you can have dreams and be feeling like you can't run or Is yeah I mean if it's strange? really scary that could go in this category at the end there's some differentiation of different uh mm -hmm. sleep issues according to western medicine and and you know what I find interesting reading about some of these really extreme dream pathologies is that you know when you go back and look at the ancient descriptions you can see oh yeah this one sounds like sleep paralysis and that one sounds like this other thing over here and 
So I guess humans always have had this kind of issue. Mm -hmm. um, so at the end, yeah, there's some slides that you might identify what you're asking about with one of those names, one of those okay. terms. Thank you. So treatment, I have a lot of slides on treatment. I don't know if we need to focus on all of them, but anyway, um, Jubing Yuan Ho Lun is this encyclopedic work from the Sui dynasty. That's around, I don't know, when is it? Around in the 700s, I think. The Sui dynasty, you know, government decided they wanted to make an encyclopedia of diseases and Chao Yuan Feng was in charge of that. And the interesting thing about this, it goes over all the known diseases of the time, but it doesn't have any herbs or any acupuncture to treat it. It has qigong or dao yin to treat it. Um, and um, actually, there's somebody named Dolly Yang who is um, writing a book that's going to be out soon that's um, like all the qigong exercises from Jubing Yuan Ho Lun. So, I think it's really fascinating to kind of research into like ancient types types of qigong. But for this sleep paralysis, then it's quoting from some other text. It says, it's calling it restricting the hun gate and controlling the po door. So remember the hun and po in some of the descriptions are up there and, and unable to come back. And so you don't want them to leave. Um, you want to keep them in. And so this is called the grasping and securing method. Mm -hmm. And it tells you to, so this is a picture of my hand and I'm doing it the best I understand this description. Um, you know, so uh, hopefully it's more or less correct. It wants the thumbs so they touch the four smaller fingers, embracing them inside. So the thumbs on the outside and the other fingers are on the inside. Keep practicing all the time. And then when you go to sleep, you try to go to sleep with your hands shut like this. So the one and fall can't leave. Um, and that keeps the person from having ghost oppression enchantment. Um, but, you know, to get it to touch all four fingers, I have to make my fist pretty tight. I don't think I could fall asleep with such a tight fist. I mean, I could have it looser and only touch three <laughs> fingers. So I don't know. Um, maybe some of you know more about Dao Yin than I do, but that's what this says. So that's one thing. Um, how about internal medicine? We saw that there are formulas that we can't use today because it has all these, you know, toxic minerals that we're not going to use. But there are also plenty of formulas that we could use. So that's the good news. Um, these formulas, though, didn't come with cases or good descriptions. So that's why they're here separate. Um, you know, so, for example, Pujifang, which is that one by the Ming government, that's a really huge book. It has this um major heart settling decoction and it also has minor heart settling decoction treats heart deficiency remember they talked about deficiency for this a lot with palpitations like distraction like the person has a hard time focusing and stuff like that forgetfulness or awakening in fright ghost oppression and insufficient jur, which is the spirit of the kidneys but it also sometimes means mind if you look at the herbs, all of these are herbs we can find and all of these are usable today. So this is a formula we could use. One thing to note that Fu Shen is in a bunch of these formulas, which is the Fu Ling that I think it's the part that's nearest the tree. Um, and that's more calming. And Yuan Zhi is in all of these. Um, Long Gu will weigh you down the Shen and the Hun and herbs to supplement blood and herbs to supplement chi and and guaxian is in a lot of them that's like some type of roadway um cinnamon and so there's some directions which are a little weird but you can add however much water you want and um okay here's another the minor version so there's you know the major and the minor version this is for somebody with a deficient emaciated body timid, weak, heart chi, 
frequent ghost oppression and forgetfulness. And again, we have Fu Shen, we have um, Yuan Zhe, we have ginseng to supplement deficiency in Gui Xin, and then a couple other herbs. It's a smaller formula. Here, they want you to just break the herbs into small pieces and then um, boil them. Instead of using decocting slices, you've broken them into small pieces, more surface area. Mm -hmm. Another formula called um, from the same book, but it's quoting it from an earlier formula, ginseng um, powder, heart chi deficiency, distraction, forgetfulness, awaking from dreams in fright, ghost depression, and so forth. And again, we have ginseng, we have fushen, yuanjir, those seem to be the herbs. So I'm pretty happy having these formulas because sometimes it's hard to find a formula that doesn't have minerals all through it. And so uh, here's Fu Shen San. Um, so yeah, again, it's gonna have Fu Shen and uh, let's see, Yuan Zhe, Ginseng, Gui Xin. You can see the same herbs are repeated. And why is that important? If you wanted to write your own formula, you know, well, if somebody's having ghost depressive dreams, these herbs are probably going to be part of the treatment. These formulas seem fairly warm. There are not a lot of cooling herbs. You would think maybe you would want some cooling herbs, but that's not what these formulas are doing. You have to see what fits for your patient. So, by the way, you know, those of you who are at Empress College, um, you know, you probably have access to the slideshow already, but I'll put the slideshow up in academia for those who are not at Empress College, um, you know, so that you can refer to this. You don't have to try and scribble down the formula right away. So, and I'll post the video on YouTube. Um, okay. So, ah. Uh, Okay, we're continuing on with herbal formulas. Do you have any questions so far? Okay. Uh, a woman often suffered ghost depression dreams at night. It was probably because she took care of her sick parents when she was young. And so she was always like so concerned that she overused her heart. She, you know, made her heart deficient. So she took Ding Jir One, which is actually a not one of the formulas from before. And so it's from um, Chen Jin Fang. And again, Jinxing, Fu Ling, um, Yuan Zhe, and Shi Chang Pu. Just another formula we could possibly use. That's and as far as individual herbs, Shen Nong Ban Sao has Mu Xiang is used for ghost oppressive sleep. I don't think you'd use it by itself, but that's, you know, you could think about putting that in a formula, possibly if it suits the patient. It's interesting that that formula was um, will stabilizing and not uh, yeah. stabilizing. None of them say hun stabilizing. <laughs> um, yeah. This word though, like the, the will is the um, spirit of the kidneys, but will is used in other contexts to mean mind. And the like when they talk about the five emotions, the term they use is the wujie, the five jie, the five minds. So it is used sometimes in a different way than the spirit of the kidneys. And here, this is probably more about stabilizing the mind and not the will of you know the kidneys probably um lorraine can i ask yes. um i see the yuan Zhir and the shishan poo coming up in during this time period was there a concept of or did they relate it to like damp or phlegm or the sort of the ways that we would see those two herbs now does that show up in the text or is that uh I'm no, sure. they don't really talk about that. They did mention phlegm in an earlier one. Right. I forget what they said about it. But I think 
the fooling is more for its um, strengthening this. Remember, deficiency is a part of this. So we have ginseng against the deficiency. Fooling also helps the spleen. And often they say fu shen rather than fu ling. Right. So that still helps the spleen, but it calms the spirit. And shi chang pu is one that awakens the mind. I mean, maybe we also use it for dampness, but it's definitely used in a lot of rescue formulas to awaken the mind right. and penetrate through. So I think I'd, I'd look at it more in that sense than the damp. But of course, we can consider damp and phlegm as either being a result of the spleen being deficient or um, you know, an additional complication that's going to, you know, phlegm can have mental, emotional, psychological consequences. Right. But they, they didn't, they didn't tie, tie that concept to this. It was just a, I haven't seen that, but you know, I'm just poking around and randomly finding things. I haven't like comprehensively searched every text. Okay. So I haven't come across them talking about damp and phlegm as a big part of this. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, phlegm didn't become commonly discussed until Judan Shi, which is a little bit later than this particular one. But the Ming Dynasty stuff um, was after Judan Shi. But like they really didn't talk about phlegm pre Yuan Dynasty very much. It wasn't a big thing. And Judan Shi made phlegm famous. <laughs> okay, very uh, good. Thank you. Yeah, but dampness was a thing. Um, okay. Go uh, home in Joho Beiji Fang. If anyone, I don't know why it says male or female, you know, if anyone tends to communicate with ghosts in dreams and make the patient distracted from the real world, like unfocused, unable to concentrate, unable to be <laughs> out in the world where other humans are. Um, then it says file sections of deer antler into shavings and scoop up like a pinch of them and take it with rice wine for three days. Um, you know, I kind of am not into animal products, but yeah, I just included it because it's something that we could possibly do. Okay, so if it is a thing like sleep paralysis or one of the other related pathologies, sometimes somebody's asleep and can't wake up and maybe they're yelling in their sleep, but they can't wake up or maybe they're just like, you know, you're shaking them and they can't wake up or something. And so a treatment in emergency conditions when the patient is unconscious is either blowing a powder into the nose um, and making the patient sneeze is like actually the goal of this. And another thing that they did is pour in a liquid into the mouth or sometimes even the nose. Um, you know, because an unconscious person can't just take a pill or something like that. Um, so this section, when they talk about blowing a powder in or pouring a liquid in is for unconscious um, people. So sudden ghost depression, when poor wandering outside, um, evils have arrested them, have stopped them and it, there are these warnings that we get for somebody who can't wake up like that, that you're not supposed to turn on the lights if the lights are off. And if the lights are on, you're not supposed to turn them off. You're supposed to leave the lighting the way that it was. And so there's this herb, Zhao Jia, which is not a state board herb. So a lot of us don't aren't really familiar with it, but it's an herb you can still get. And it's used a lot in like this kind of rescue blowing a powder up the nose. And, you know, then the patient will sneeze and that gets their, that jump starts their breathing. Um, it raises the dead and returns them to life. Okay, that's a good thing. Um, and then if the light was on, leave it on. If there's no light, don't turn it on. Blow unprocessed bansha powder. Well, we can't get unprocessed bansha. All the bansha we get is already processed. 
Um, Bancha has toxicity and processing reduces it, but um, in any case, that's what they're recommending here for ghost depression, dreams, death. <laughs> um, hot salted water, um, the juice from Chinese chives or Chinese leeks. Um, okay, so we're less likely to do that, but I'm just having it here. Okay, how about external use of substances? These are the heavy minerals that we're not gonna take internally, but I don't see any harm in like wearing them on your body. Um, maybe I'm wrong, maybe they are harmful, but um, yeah, some of these I wouldn't recommend taking internally, but you could, you know, wear it in a little pouch or something like that. So Xianghuang, which is realgar, it's this yellow mineral. Um, put it in your belt, males on the left, females on the right, um, to ward off, this is from Go Hong, Joho Beiji Fang, to ward off ghost depressive dreams, um, put some the size of a date pit under the left underarm, I guess that gets it close to the heart. Um, it frees the person from ghost depression dreams for their whole life. Mm. The bottom one, Shishang, musk, but it says genuine, so it doesn't want synthetic. Um, and it says the size of one zi. That took me a long time to figure out, but finally somebody, oh, um, Yue Lu, who Eric was asking me about her before, she figured out that this means, you know how in Chinese coins, how they have those four characters? Um, and it means this is a character. It means one character. It's like a, enough to cover one character is one is this measurement of musk. Um, or this kind of special kind of realgar. But it says jusha um, cinnabar is even more wonderful. So put that on the victim's head. How are you supposed to put it on their head? But you know, Chinese uh, men had this top knot at the time, right? Um, or a braid, or they wore hats, so it could be in the hat or something, or it's you know somehow in their hair. And women also have fancy hair, um, and also one at the left armpit to ward off ghosts and goblins and resolve nightmares. Okay. <laughs> So uh, another interesting book, Tsang Tse uh, was a Song Dynasty doctor who wrote a book on forensics. It's the earliest book in the whole world on medical forensics. Um, and so anyway, it has some stuff that, you know, is not related to murders and whatever, but someone who's unconscious from this move them from where they are and then slowly and gently call them and they'll come back to life. Uh, again, they warn you about not turning on the lamp and also don't call out panically, panicking, wake up, wake up. Um, but instead, I don't think I'm gonna do this, bite their heels and big toes to cause them pain and frequently repeat their name, spit saliva on their face, that's horrible. But you know what, another thing, ghosts don't like saliva. That's like a thing in Chinese culture. They don't like saliva, it scares them. So, um, and pour ginger decoction into their mouth and they'll come back to life. Some of these I'm not gonna go for. Okay, Akimaksa, yay. Um, so spleen five. I didn't remember that or I didn't know that. Um, and um, so somebody who has a tendency, this is not necessarily to wake them up in the middle of it, but someone who has a tendency to have ghost depressive dreams, spleen five um, or Sanjiao 16 cures confused dreams. Um, and Jenjo Dachang has stomach 45 and spleen one. Um, and also has spleen five again and GB44 and LI5. And um, you know that clump of hair that's supposed to be on the big toe, which in some books describe as looking like this type of grass. <laughs> um, 21 cones of moxa. 
right there. And uh, this is basically moxa on both big toes on the medial side, a Chinese leaf from the corner of the nail. And, you know, it just keeps going on. UB60, um, do 21 moxa. So you could choose what you think for a person, um, do 26. And then there's like too many, I have too many slides on this um, ghost eye point. So I'm not gonna read you all of those slides, but there's a point, there's a foot ghost eye point and a hand ghost eye point. They're also called ghost crying points. And so basically the point is, the hand ghost crying point is more or less lung 11 and the foot ghost crying point is more or less spleen one. Okay, but it's a special treatment. So they want three times seven mugwort cones. That means 21 cones on both big toes where the hairs grow. Oh, so that one would be that, that way of locating liver one, but you could also do it on the ghost crying points. Um, so basically um, the description is you're supposed to tie the thumbs together so that um, you know, the corners of the nail are near each other. And this is symbolic of binding the ghost. And then you make a cone of moxa that's covering the corner of the nail on both sides and the corner of the flesh on both sides. It, and it, they say the fire has to touch all four places. So this is going to be like you're going to leave a moxasaur here. Um, but if somebody's really desperate, they might be willing to try it. Um, these are also Sun Simya's ghost points, um, you know, more or less lung 11 and spleen and spleen one. Um, so you can see lung 11 and spleen one have, you know, they're two of Sun Simya's ghost points and they're also the ghost crying points or the um, you know, yeah. So if you're interested in this, um, you can, you know, read more about this. Oh, this one is pretty interesting. Place the mugwort so it simultaneously sits on the corners of both thumbnails and on the flesh proximal to the nail. Um, and when you light the moxicone, the patient will pitifully say, I am leaving, which it's actually the ghost that's saying through the patient, I'm leaving, <laughs> chasing that ghost out. Um, here's just more about it. So, you know, it always says, make sure the cone touches the four places. So, you know, the corners of the nails and the corners of the flesh. Um, yeah. Mm, you know, they talk about sometimes binding the toes together or the thumbs together. So you can read more about that um, if you want to, but I have a lot of slides on that one thing. Okay. So for acupuncture, the points that they mention, note that four of the points are the foot jing well points, you know, spleen one, GB44, stomach 45, and liver one are all well points on the feet. So the hand well points restore consciousness for wind stroke or things like that, but the foot well points are used for these dream disturbances, at least four of them. Um, and then the ghost eye or the ghost crying points, hand and foot, which also are related to well points. Spleen five, we saw mentioned in a couple of sources, UB60, LI5. Anyway, here's a whole list. And of these 11 points, Moxa was specified on five of the 11. Fricking or, you know, acupuncture was specified only on one of them. And I think most of these, it was, it would be grain of rice type moxa. And they just assumed that you knew it was moxa because moxa is young and ghosts don't like young. 
ghosts are yin and they don't like brightness. They don't like heat. They don't like warmth. And so moxa is going to chase, you know, spirits away. You don't have to believe in spirits. I'm not even saying I believe in spirits, but this is what they thought. And this was the treatment that they felt was effective. So even if in modern times we have a different explanation um, this is how the treatment came about. And remember, if they're deficient, moxa is probably a better thing than um, needling. So before I move on, are there questions? Yeah. Hi, Lorraine. I have Hi. a question. Yes. Hi. I'm wondering um, if, if they have um, any ways of knowing more about the ghost realm and if that's more of a familiar place and if if the ghosts like if, if they come in during the dreams is the ghost realm around all the time are the characters and the ghosts that they're speaking of um i know yeah that's like the do you believe in ghosts but yeah what did they think um or what did they say about that so I did a thing a while ago, I don't remember when, probably last quarter, about um, ghosts in Chinese medicine and the videos on YouTube. So, you know, you might be interested in that. Like my YouTube channel is just my name. So if you search my name, then you'll come up with some of these videos on the weird things that I like to research. Um, and so there's there's more there. And you know, the, I mentioned these tales of the strange. There's so many different books, um, ancient books. Some of them are like Qing Dynasty, which is recent in terms of ancient times, you know, 150 years ago. And some of them are like fifth century or something like that. And I just love reading them. Um, a lot of them are translated into English and I should make up a book list and post it somewhere of some of the books that I have. Um, and, you know, we're used to a certain type of storytelling in modern times and ancient people weren't necessarily trying to tell a story like fiction, which has a beginning, a middle and a resolution in the end. They were just recording strange occurrences. So sometimes you know, you're at the end, you finish reading it and you say, well, what was that all about? But other times it's very informative in what they understood about ghosts. These are not necessarily medical, although some of them are. So it's just, you know, I don't, I don't like your question is big and broad to discuss. I don't have an exact answer, but they, many of them, in the thing about ghosts, one of the things I realized in my research is that many doctors thought ghosts were real and could really kind of invade a person, but many doctors didn't think ghosts were real, or at least in certain cases, they thought that's not a ghost, but they acted like they believed it was a ghost because that's what the patient needed, you know? <laughs> is to be believed, right? Nobody wants to be gaslighted and told, ah, that's not happening, right? So so sometimes it was obvious the doctor didn't think it was a ghost, but still used ghost treatment because that's what would, you know, help the patient the most. Um, so I don't have an exact answer, but it would be fun to, you know, sometime have a cup of tea and just sit around discussing ghosts and stuff like that. I don't know why I'm so interested. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, so incantation, um, you know, the in Chinese culture, of course, there was Taoism that had incantations. There's Buddhism that had mantra. And the, there's not a different word as far as I can tell for incantation versus mantra. Um, you know, it's the same kind of idea, but there are definitely Taoist style and Buddhist style. And within Buddhist style, some of it was kind of folk Buddhism and not things from the original Sanskrit texts, it would seem. Um, so in any case, uh, here is a story from what book is this? I think this is a medical book. We'll find out. Maybe it's, I don't remember what book this is. Um, anyway, so somebody named Liu was from someplace and he was a Confucian 
And Confucians aren't big into Taoist or Buddhist mantras or incantations, right? Confucians, it's like Confucius said, respect ghosts and spirits, but keep a distance from them. <laughs> so, um, you know, he didn't come from that kind of household. But besides studying rhetoric, he constantly lit incense for the North Pole because the stars were like deities. Certain stars were kind of like deities. So maybe he's not like a perfect Confucian, but anyway. <clears throat> he often resided in the capital. And when he was young, he had like deficient shen qi, like his spirit was deficient, his mind was weak. And so he suffered from fright and ghost oppression. And often he couldn't wake up or maybe he'd wake up, but he couldn't move. It could have been that paralysis thing where you feel awake, but you can't move. So he met a Taoist priest who instructed him in this particular incantation and commanded him, told him to persist in reciting it a thousand times. So Liu was diligent and he did. He also stopped eating meat and fish, which sounds kind of like a Buddhist thing and focused on burning incense. He also conscientiously cultivated excellence in himself. And from that time on, he stopped having ghost oppression and he stopped having fright palpitations again. So this is a very long one. This one would take you some time to memorize it. Um, it's continued on the next slide. Um, and so then it says, every four phrases, click your teeth to divide it into segments. So you see, like, I don't know how familiar you are with Chinese, but note there are four characters, comma, four characters, period, four characters, comma, four characters, period. And then you click your teeth. <laughs> you know, you can see these are all sets of four characters times four, and then you'd click your teeth. Um, yeah, so, um, that sentence about clicking your teeth, I just could not understand it. And I thank Leo Locke for helping me with translating that. He's an amazing person, but any mistakes in any translation are mine and not his. So I found three different videos of people chanting this. So in case if you want to chant it, then I think once you have the slideshow, you can still copy and paste the link. Um, but like all of these, the pronunciation might be different because if they speak a different dialect or if there's some transmission of a correct pronunciation or sometimes words have more than one way to be pronounced or sometimes one word is a little bit different in it. So, so th this is what was in the text I got, the book I got it from. But um, yeah, I did find three videos of it in case you did want to learn it or, you know, have somebody learn it or even listen to it. You know, I mean, sometimes depending on how you feel, sometimes listening to mantra might be almost as effective as chanting. <laughs> um, so. Okay, that's kind of my Chinese medicine stuff and Chinese, you know, tales of the strange stuff. But I have some, mo oh, I think there's a little bit more. No, I could be wrong. But I have some modern information here. So before I do that, do you have any more questions or comments? Okay. So it's obvious that ghost oppressive dreams and ghost oppression are not regular nightmares. You know how you might dream that you have a test that you're unprepared for. This is something in a whole different realm. Um, these are really serious and not just anxiety dreams. Um, so I looked a little bit on sleep disorders and this place seemed to have a nice set of definitions of things. Parasomnias are sleep disorders that involve unwanted events or experiences while you're falling asleep or while you're waking up. And so everything we talked about today is a parasomnia, but that's like a big umbrella 
term. And there's some specific things. There are also other things that I didn't copy down because they weren't so relevant today. Night terrors. Remember there was the guy who was in the student dormitory who was yelling in his sleep and nobody else could sleep because of it. Night terrors, they scream in their sleep and they're not responsive to outside stimuli and they don't even necessarily recall it. Well, he did recall it in that story. And um, so, you know, there's that. There's sleep related hallucinations. If they happen while you're falling asleep, they're called hypnagogic. And if they happen when you're waking up, they're hypnopompic. Okay. <laughs> Um, and they can involve different senses. And in extreme cases, the sleeper may do like sleepwalking or sleep running away to escape their hallucinations. And um, nightmare disorder is often PTSD. People with PTSD have, you know, these nightmares that are, you know, involve threats to survival. And so I think that person in the student dormitory may have had this because they mentioned the war that had been happening and the city was devastated and stuff like that. So that could be part of the problem. Um, sleep paralysis. So their body um, is limp during sleep or uh, when they fall asleep or upon awakening, but they can't move any part of it. Um, and this doesn't say that, but there's often a feeling of pressure on their chest. And then even narcolepsy, people who fall asleep, um, you know, for no reason, but they have a higher rate of sleep paralysis and vivid imagery can occur. So this sounds like the kinds of stuff we've been, you know, talking about earlier. Here is, you know, I know Wikipedia is not the best source of information, but just a general idea that you're conscious in sleep paralysis, but you can't move or speak. You can hallucinate. There's often fear, but it says often, not always. So I think we heard earlier of somebody who wasn't experiencing much fear, if any, um, and they can't move or speak. Um, and they hear imagined sounds, or at least they're calling them imagined. They often have sensations of being dragged out of bed or flying um, and various other sensations. They often have an intruding presence or dark figure in the room and a suffocating feeling, um, a feeling of pressure on their chest and difficulty breathing. So that, you know, um, that, ghost oppression, that's that pressure thing. In the West, there's been artwork about this. The cover slide for this slideshow um, had one of these and you can see, of course, it's always a half naked woman, um, <laughs> which it doesn't necessarily always happen to women. Um, I had a student once that when this was mentioned in class said, that he regularly had this and um, that it was terrifying. But after a while, he became kind of accustomed to it. So even though it was still frightening, but he still knew at the same time that it, this was just that thing and that it wasn't actually happening. So it was less frightening. But you can see these have like a evil thing on top. And they often have a picture of a mare in it because the word nightmare has this word mare in it. So there's a horse and here you can see shadow of a horse. And um, again, you can see the horse and the evil thing on their chest. So you can see this is just like a theme that some painters um, used, but it must have been an experience of people to have this kind of painting. Then Wikipedia, though, says that the word nightmare, even though it has the word mare in it, it comes from an old English word that means goblin or demon, but has no connection with the modern word for a female horse. Yet in these paintings, they all show a horse. So, you know, I don't know what truth is. Um, and so that's just, yeah. So, um, you know, we don't have to go yet, but I do want to 
remember to thank Eric and to thank Empress College and to thank all of you for coming because, you know, I, I like researching things and then it's nice to have somebody to share it with. Uh, so um, I'm kind of done with the show, but let's talk about stuff. What do you have to say? People take Ambien for sleep I, off. And sleep oh, off. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, it's okay. I just wanted to say thank you. Um, oh. I often, I didn't ever have sleep paralysis, but um, as a child, I had a lot of like ghosts and demon figures come visit me during my sleep, like the dark figure in the corner of the room. That was really my experience for all of my formative years. And I find this topic really interesting. Um, I also, but now the way that I, they kind of went away on their own, but now I have two like very um, special like protection rituals that I do for myself mm. every um, day to help deal with that. Um, Cause I think people, I think people in our field, especially people that are in like a healing empathic field, we're very drawn to this work because we, um, maybe have had experiences with this or like we're more susceptible to like other worldly energies or the other like beyond the veil. So um, I think acupuncture is an interesting tool to, for like protection too. Some of this idea of protection may relate to, you know, a lot of practitioners feel, oh, I'm treating this patient with shoulder pain and now I'm feeling shoulder pain. Um, and so some people have protection rituals, like when they're treating patients, so they don't absorb some of the bad chi. Maybe it's like a similar kind of idea. Yeah, definitely. I think it's important to try to protect yourself energetically from, from not just the ghosts and demons like we're talking about, but like bad, bad vibes. <laughs> to popularize it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it doesn't hurt and it might help <laughs> to protect yourself. So anyone else have these dream experiences? Can I ask you a question, Lorraine? Yes, of course. Uh, yes, I, I, um, at the beginning, you said that all of this happens and somebody that it is sick, that uh, if you're healthy and wholesome and whatever, uh, this ghost will not, or evil spirits will not come to you. I have two experiences, one with my grandmother when I was about 12 years old and recently my mother had died. My grandmother, her mother, my maternal grandmother had a, a sleep paralysis mm -hmm. and a couple of times that, that she was totally um at one point we had to wake her um, because she knew that she was paralyzed and, and it was very frightening for her. Um, and she started making sound like, mm, and my brother who was 14 at the time overheard her and, and he went and grandma, are you okay? Are you okay? And then finally she was able to respond, but it was very um, frightening for her. And we, we couldn't, you know, it is stopped after after several months after my mother had passed away. But um, so I understand that maybe it was because of grief and depression, her daughter had passed away. So I understand that happening to her with, with everything that you have said. But in my case, the only experience I've had was um, one of my siblings was going through something really difficult and I was worried about him. And in one night, I just had this real vivid um, dream in which I'm looking for him. I never find him, but I know that he's waiting for me. And um, I, I have to go through a lot of things. It, it, you know, it's a very rough uh, terrain. It, I'm climbing, I'm, I'm getting scratched by, by different dry um, 
branches of trees and <clears throat> rocks make my feet um, bleed. And I mean, you know, lots of uh, challenges that I have to uh, uh -huh. go through in order to find him, <clears throat> which I do. And I, I rescue him, but I going, you know, uh, uh, looking back that dream was kind of prophetic in a point because later on my my brother i had to rescue my brother let's uh -huh. put it that way <laughs> you know so no. it, it actually happened but i don't look i don't think that i was uh, yes i was worried but not not to the point that i i, I might have been considered sick i'm uh, not so sure what do you think so uh, I'm not sure that that's, you know, in this category, because that seems like a maybe a nightmare that's based on something in your life. And it's not like it was a ghost evil. It's somebody who is alive and who was okay. in your life. And and I didn't say okay. sick. I said deficient. Um, and so, oh, okay. Okay. like, I'm deficient, but I'm not sick. <laughs> You know, okay. uh, so so I, I just want to clarify that point, um, but I'm not okay. sure. Well, that sounds like a anxiety dream. I mean, your grandmother may have had a ghost oppressive dream, but that sounds more like an anxiety, you know, nightmare to me than a ghost oppression nightmare. Um, okay. So let's let Eric... Um, you know, mentioned that this is a fundraiser. Do you mind, Eric? And then we can keep talking, but uh, people are starting to trickle away, so. Uh, yes. Um, so um, we are, every every meeting is a, is a fundraiser. And so this time we're raising funds for victims of the recent earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. So, um, we're asking that everyone make a five to ten dollar, or however much you're able to make a donation to um, to benefit people there. And um, one way to do that is through the Red Cross. So um, I dropped the link in the chat box, and then Dr. Wilcox also will post a link to that in the description of the YouTube video. So um, also, we're asking people who watch this on YouTube to also make a donation, please. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm doing this. I don't get paid for doing this like the I get karma payment. <laughs> Not really. But um anyway, so so it would be good if you could make a donation. Um they really need it. It's really horrific. Could be us next time and we want people donating to us. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So, who was it? Was it's Celeste who told me, who told us that you had these kind of dreams. Um, no, hi. It was hi. me. Oh, wow, my, my oh, Gloria. Yes, hi. Uh, so, well, there's so much to say about this. Thank you so <laughs> much for this lecture. But uh, to be very specific, um, when you say that they're scary, and I like very much. Um, what you know, last person who spoke said, uh, yeah, about making a differentiation between whether it is an illness or you know your immunity is down, you know. And I like how you said it was a deficiency and piecing it all together. Um, generally, for me, I was um, born remembering being in my mom's belly in the first place. So I am telepathic, psychic, whatever you want to call it. And so it came with the territory. So to, again, to your lecture point, yeah, um, being raised in my country and being told that I was going to hell created a lot of scary thoughts when I would have this, um, you know, sleep paralysis thing, as you're calling it. And I get that in Western medicine, I'm sure you know that, right? It's diagnosed as like a heart failure condition that you can die from. And they make you really scared to take Western medical drugs. But anyway, um, I had to learn to accept that I was going to wake up and go, now where did I leave my body? And sort of like <laughs> find the path back. And so I did, by the time I was like 17, I would do the tests where I would 
go somewhere and look at, I, it was that ridiculous. Um, look at somebody's socks, a construction worker. So that then when I wake myself up and run. And I also found very interesting what you were saying about this, because the way I wake myself up is I would move the smallest part, my pinky, and then shake my hand and then all of it. So, you know, the, the, the lecture was pretty awesome. And Thank I you. feel that there might be a different kind of like conversation to be had as to me, there are other dimensions. We are living in a multiverse. <laughs> and I love that we, in my opinion, are, have gone from like the 3D to 4D to 5D, some of us going into other, um, let's say other dimensions so that we can contemplate how the I Ching uses is the periodic table of time and space and how it connects, which is part of my dissertation, how it connects to whatever your trigram is from birth and then your face of life. And I wonder if people could train themselves who have like the bad kind, if they could train themselves to go to a different place when it happens to them and have an experience that's more like yours. Yeah, well, and that's, I mean, I, I had to learn by uh, practice, but I, I love that idea because if more people understood it as not being like scary, horrible ghosts, but okay, how can we have fun? This is going to yeah. happen. And there's, um, you know, I don't know. I don't want to yeah. overspeak, but. Uh, Thanks for I'm sharing your experience. And I do remember you now. It's hard because you're just a little square on my screen, but I do remember <laughs> who you are now. Yeah. Um, Celeste, is your camera on to say something or you're just hanging out? Oh, I'm back. I was warming up my broth. No, oh. <laughs> but I did think that was cool. Gloria had to say, kind of tapped into my comment a little bit about maybe these ghosts are in like another dimension that we can access in non-dream states. And maybe they come and prey upon deficiencies in this dimension. There's some transference. I don't know. Uh, Gloria could probably say more about this because she sees more and everything. So I don't know. That's cool. Anyone I do else have questions, Dr. Yes. Fox, um, which is kind of related to this question, because what I was thinking is like the other dimension, but also like the case that I shared with myself was that, you know, my parents' home was built on a um, Native American burial ground. Hmm. So I think that that was related to what my experiences were as a child. So are these did they say anything in the classics about this being more like geographically located? And then that is what makes me want to talk about the window of the sky and ghost points in the acupuncture, where because those were developed after like lots of war and like they said that the ancestors went crazy. Right? I don't know about ancestors going crazy part, but um, as far as the geography part, you know, Chinese folk beliefs are that there are local spirits, you know, a mountain, a rock, a river, a tree could have a local spirit that could influence people if it was stirred up or if it was unhappy or if they chopped down the tree, the spirit of the tree could come and bother the person who chopped it down. But I haven't read about that in the context of this kind of dream stuff. Well, of course, dreams sometimes, the other realm, if you believe in such a thing, communicates through dreams, but that's not like a regular ghost oppressive dream. So, so I, yeah, all this stuff is interrelated. Um, but this is like more a very specific kind of recurrent pathology and not a one-time thing. I'm babbling. I don't know. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Thank you. Oh, Rachel's here. I didn't know you were here. Hi. Hi. Oh, oh two hi, Rachel. Rachel. No, but I mean, I, I, yeah, I'm glad both of you are here. You said you were going to be here last the other day. So good. I'm glad you're here. Um, yeah, I was actually thinking about, I think I mentioned this at, in another talk, but um, most of the people that I know that have had this happen 
it it is in a time when there's a lot of chaos going on in their life and there's a lot of like um you know like drinking actually alcohol is very much involved mm -hmm. and i feel like that deficiency is so noticeable then where it's like your whole system is down and then you have this occurrence happen and it a lot of it does feel like it signals some sort of snap in the person too. So it's kind of like a wake up call a lot of times. It's very interesting. Yeah, I think deficiency really, like all this stuff about ghosts, like not even the dreams, but just like ghosts in general, they bother a person who's deficient because it's like, if it, you're totally filled, there's no place for the ghost to get inside. There has to be an opening, a crack, a crevice for the ghost to come in. Just like wind evils, there has to be like a opening, like the pores um, here. This is a different kind of opening, but you know, there has to be an empty space for it to come into the body. Um, so I think deficiency is part of it, yeah. Can I uh, say something about that? Of course. So Rachel, to, to what you're saying, um, I think I've always known that. So when I was little, these, uh, these non-incarnates would show up and say, I was killed like this, or I drank too much, or I did da 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 da. So I've never drank, never smoked all that stuff. But during these, you know, um, last couple of isolation period years that we've been going through, I've had more people contact me that they're having this sudden, what they're calling sudden spiritual awakenings. And um, yeah, I think, I think there's a connection there to the amount of uh, recreational drugs, <laughs> alcohol, or fill in the blank that they're doing that. Um, and I'm not saying it's uh, good or bad. That's not for me to judge, but uh I, I kind of think that in a good way, if you could keep yourself centered, it's a wonderful awakening to these other realms. I mean, like I always say, if you still believe that there are no other beings in other planets, that's just ridiculous, you know? So I don't know. I hope that's all I have to say. Thank you, Gloria. I, I think I'm gonna, oh, who, sorry, who's talking? Eric. Um, I was just going to say that my experience with these types of dreams is very much like sleep paralysis, like not like any of the descriptions of the ghost depressive dreams in the case studies that you, um, you know, you shared with us, but very much like I wake up, there's something sitting on top of me, I can't breathe, I can't move. I'm terrified. I feel like, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm about to die because I can't breathe. I'm, this thing on top of me is suffocating. It's really, really scary. Uh, and it doesn't happen anymore, but it used to happen fairly frequently. Um, definitely, probably when I, in a time when my life, when I was more deficient. And I really thought it was interesting, Gloria, what you said about how you woke yourself up from these is by like trying to wiggle a finger. And that's exactly what I would do. I would try to move any part of me that that I could move and then slowly would be able to get myself to a point where I was able to like move and actually be awake. Uh, but yeah, that was, that's my experience with, with that type of dream. One thing that surprises me is like, people don't talk about this a lot, but yet once you start a conversation, so many people say, yeah, I've had that too. <laughs> so I think we should assume like that some of our patients have had it, but they may not be necessarily mentioning it. And something else I thought was interesting was the use of the, um, the like orifice opening herbs and some of the formulas. Mm. Like you, I don't know, I just, Think of those, I, I'm, I'm not, you know, an expert herbalist or anything like that, but I think of those as like opening the orifice so that things could get out. Ah. But maybe it's also there, you know, used so that things can, like the hun can get back in or things can get back in and get back to where they're supposed to be. And I don't that know makes sense. what you have an analysis of the, the function of those herbs and those, those formulas, but I'm curious about it. Yeah, I haven't taken the time to like really analyze the formulas. I take the time to try and translate stuff. I don't always go back and absorb it. So maybe somebody else has comments.
Not quite, but I, I did, I was thinking more about the points too and about the ghost points that you used and about the, how maybe the ghost protocol would file into that, uh, or the, the ghost point protocol, if you use that. I don't know much about the herb side, but I love what you had to say about the moxa. And of course you know all about that. So that's cool. One of my earlier obsessions. Yeah. On that note, actually, um, speaking of the herbal formulas, um, I found it fascinating about what you said with the minerals there. So I do homeopathy and naturopathic, let's call them methodology. And one of the things that's fascinated me is the usage of cell salts. So cell salts are made from minerals. And when a person is having a certain health condition, uh, depending on when they were born, as per astrology, Western astrology, um, well, used from the European astrology, uh, you can, you can, you, I cycle them. You know how we cycle women on a full moon, new moon, depending on their cycle? You do the same thing with minerals, depending on the uh, three astrological signs that they relate to, whether it's for themselves for their father's lineage or their mother's lineage. So it made so much sense when you said about the minerals. And I think that, you know, uh, I mean, we should be more sacred to this earth and not taking its crystals for our own personal usage, but instead finding ways to, um, you know, hone in with minerals and plants and, you know, everything we we've known so thank you sounds like you've spent a ton of time thinking about all of these things so yeah we should chat sometime that's super cool i think a lot about the, the salt especially that's fascinating i i was wondering if um uh, it's okay if i ask olivia a little bit more about her experience um being living on an ancient burial ground. I think that if if you're okay to spend some time there. Is I think Olivia still here? She's oh, yes. I'm here, no problem. Should I stop recording? I mean, if you want to say personal stuff. Yeah, uh, either way is fine. I yeah. think I'm ready to stop recording if you don't mind. No, I don't mind at all. Sorry, listeners, later, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm stopping recording. <laughs>